So with indoor states coming up here in a little bit, I decided that I need to actually finalize the tune that I'm going to be using here on my Verbo setup because that's when I'm going to be shooting indoor states here in about two weeks or so. So I'm going to finalize the tune that I am going to be working with here on this ATFX and these MXT 10 limbs that are foam. And then after that, I'm going to shoot a 30 arrow round for score. And I figured might as well do it on camera and uh, then post it online for you guys to enjoy. So I'm pretty close with my setup as it is. Um, I'm a little on the stiff side, I believe, still, so I need to probably come up another half a turn to a turn on my limb bolts. I still have plenty of room I can go in with that. And then I'm gonna shoot a 30 arrow round and see how it goes. But uh, I've got a camera down range to show the results on the target and I'll film the whole time and talk about my discoveries and thoughts and what's going on inside my head because it's a little different with bare bow than shooting Olympic style recurve. I'm excited for the tournament and I'm really enjoying shooting bare bow now, especially with my uh, grip sear here that I've been using. Um, you know, it's not an actual grip sear that sticks on my bow, so it's legal to use because I'm just activating my finger off the edge of the grip itself and not actually using a device. So I can do it legally in competition and there is no issue. So I've got movable knocking points on here. Once I get it finalized, I'll have to retie those as well. Um, but I'm gonna shoot a few here and warm up. I'll shoot a couple bear shafts. Again, I'm pretty sure they've been hitting a little on the stiff side. I'll shoot all three of them so I get a good average result. Looks like they're maybe hitting a little high, but not too stiff. I can't quite tell from here. Yeah, definitely hitting a little high, maybe a touch stiff. I'm gonna go down and uh, verify that before I make some adjustments, but it seems to be at least pretty close. You know, close enough for this at least. Yeah, so my bear shafts are hitting roughly eight ring high maybe a touch weak, but I'm gonna dial in the knocking point first. Because I have these movable knocking points on, I'm just gonna rotate and move them up a little bit, close up the gap on it. Start from there, and then I probably will have to go up a, maybe a half a turn in my draw weight or so. Get my crawl back adjusted. Moving that knocking points up, gonna change my impact just a little. Still haven't quite figured out the speed to pull against the grip sear. Um, so I definitely have a bit longer timing than I would hope for. Uh, but it's not, you know, I'm, I'm still relatively new at doing this, so I'm not worried about it. I put it on the wrong crawl mark. I didn't do adjust on that one. 
and go back to the other spot again. Because I think there's like a going to be a balance between the actual crawl that I need to, of course, affect the knocking point that I need. But as I'm adjusting the knocking point, it's adjusting where my crawl needs to be. And you kind of end up chasing your tail, at least it seems that way, doing it this way. Well, when the bear shaft hits your flat shaft, you know you're doing something right. So it definitely looks like I'm going to go up about maybe a half turn on my bow weight. Uh, I'll double check that once I get down there. Yeah, so I am in fact going to go up about a half turn in bow weight, draw weight. I keep banging my knuckle on this little thing that sticks out here when I crack these loose. It's normally not something that close to the limb bolt lock bolt. Just gonna double check my tiller. Might be a little heavy. Um, right at that quarter inch mark. But I'm gonna leave it there for now. Um, I think I like a little bit less than a quarter inch tiller split as far as bigger on the bottom with my bare bow setup. Um, I think about a sixteenth less is what I really prefer, you know, mil or so less than the actual quarter split. Uh, but I'm going to shoot here and see if it feels okay because the crawl has slightly changed with the knocking point change and things like that. But hopefully I'll be done after this end with tuning. So I'm going to use this same crawl here, actually I'm just going to shoot a bear shaft right away. I'm going to alternate fletch and bear just on this end. Normally I'd do that anyway. Need work on that grip sear. coming down too far on the grip edge. There, that's better. Better hand position. All right, so it looks like I'm relatively close when I make a good shot and I'm in the right spot with the right crawl with the grip sear being fine. Um, so I'm just gonna leave it here. I'm gonna narrow down my crawl, uh, get that really figured out. I'm gonna leave it here and uh, shoot a 30 arrow round starting this next end. It looks like those two that I shot in the middle um, were right on the money as far as the crawl is going. So I'm just gonna start right here. All right, so I have actually never actually scored a 30 arrow round with my bear bow at 20 yards here. I actually never have scored a round at all with a bear bow. Um, the target face I'm using is not a standard target face. It is, I think an arrow mat is what the company is. It's actually like a, uh, it's like a mouse pad basically that's oversized and has a target printed on it. They last a, a lot longer. There's a lot of shots on that target face and it's still lasting quite a while. But uh, they're definitely, not regulation size. The one that my wife's been using is kind of ovaled. It's a little taller top and bottom than it is wide. Mine seems a little bit undersized. So I don't know the actual score, the lines pull, all sorts of stuff. So it's not like an accurate representation of an actual score, but it'll give me an idea as to where I'm at. And it'll be fun to shoot a score for the very first time and even better because it's on camera.
I'll just shoot three arrow ends. I've got four arrows built up that are fletched, so I'll just do three arrow ends. All right, looks like maybe three nines or something to start. Yep, it was three nines, so 27. Put a little different little hand torque in that one, so. I get those lefts every so often. I don't know if it's string alignment or torque or, I don't know. All right, so that was a 25, 988. Really need permanent knocking points on. I feel like they keep walking. The gap keeps opening up. Who knows? Definitely think that I'm not gonna use Halo as my center serving if I'm gonna do any string walking. The tab just slides on it too easily, so I might go to Polygrip or 62XS or something like that with a little bit more grip to it. The Halo is great for recurve, but for crawling, I don't know. What do you guys use? Uh, what's your most? What do you think the most popular center serving is for barebow archers that are string walking? Just not sure that Halo's the best one. Super slick, feels good on the release though. A little high on that one, kind of pushed a little too hard. Just didn't have the bow arm pressure set right. Need a nail file on my quiver. File it down, it's too long. Hmm. Keep hitting higher and higher and I keep crawling down and down. Maybe these knocking points are moving. That one was me. I think quarter inch tiller's too much. Yeah, quarter inch tiller's too much. The boat keeps wanting to rise on me. So um, I'm gonna go in a little bit on the bottom limb bolt, just a smidge. Bring that tiller down a little bit, or the split down a little bit. And it'll probably help keep my bow from rising on me like that. So I went in maybe a, an eighth of a turn at the very most on the bottom limb bolt. So it's not a huge tiller change, but uh, it should help with the feel. Don't know what it's gonna do to my crawl. Hopefully it's really close to the same. That's a lot better. Okay, still a little high. Crawl down a little. Shoot a couple ends like that. I might back the tiller down a little bit more than that too, because it still has got a little bounce to it.
too long. Wish I didn't have to use a finger sling. It sure gets in the way of this whole sear thing. I like shooting without a finger sling on the bare bow, to be honest. That one was not good. A little quick, too quick for uh, what I was hoping for. Um, I'm still playing with the finger position on the grip and it's just, I can't get it in a consistent spot and my fingernail is definitely longer on the part that is touching the grip because when I'm doing the grip sear, it's like almost the corner like this. It's not in the center. If it was in the center, it'd be good. I just got to shorten that nail a little bit in that area so it comes off a little more consistent. I might need to work this edge a little bit as well and kind of just clean it up, hit it with some really, really fine sandpaper or something like that and just kind of, I don't know, clean it up a little bit. It's the main struggle right now. That's better. Two ends left. Let's see uh, if I could break the good end, bad end cycle. <laughs> I think part of the reason, potentially, that I keep hitting high is I bet you right when I lift, because of recurve habit, I lift more with my hand uh, this hand just a little bit, the draw hand, and I think I slip up just a tiny little bit on the string. At least that's kind of what I'm feeling. So that one I really tried to have more pre-draw, more tension on the string at brace height to keep my hand in the same place as I lifted. Although that does change the draw cycle a little bit and the whole feel of the shot. Definitely a lot more tension built up that way. So I think uh, I'm definitely going to see if I've got some poly grip, power grip or whatever it's called, or 62XS in the right size so I can serve up a serving like that. And I think that'll help cure and call, um, fix a lot of that type of issue and make it go away. Still up, up, up. Last end to round out the 30 arrows uh, for score. And I'm hoping I can get a little bit better here on this crawl. I'm gonna go a little deeper than normal and see if it'll bring the arrows down that last little bit because I'm just, I'm moving down tiny, tiny little bits. I mean, when I started, I was um, two, uh, 2.6 marks up from the bottom. Now I'm down to the exact middle of the two and a half mark up from the bottom. Um, so, you know, so when I'm moving down, I'm moving down teeny tiny little bits and maybe I'm just misjudging how much I am actually moving down. So I'm going to go right to the bottom of the two and a half marks from the bottom of this tab. I just hope it's not too much. <laughs> Still a little high.
<sighs> Not sure what went wrong on that one. <laughs> Can I just say bare bow? All right, well, not too bad. I'm gonna go pull and total up the score and come back and talk about some stuff. So I shot a 260 out of 300 here at 18 meters, 20 yards. Uh, first time shooting a 30 arrow round for score. I honestly had no expectations and 260, it's a, it's a little lower than I would hope for. Um, I had a couple of mistakes and definitely struggled. I kept hitting high and every time I'd shoot eights or sevens, it'd be high. So uh, I've got some figuring out to do and figuring why that's going on. I think part of it is my fingers are slipping on this halo. So I'm gonna work on changing that most likely. And hopefully I have some poly grip or some 62 XS that's the right size so I can still use these large groove knocks on this 20 strand string. And definitely need to tie my permanent knocking points on because these are the movable type and they are definitely walking. And I don't know which direction. Um, don't I don't no, I'm not sure so I suppose if uh, what I'm seeing is right and I keep chasing down and the arrows keep hitting higher based on what happened when I raised my knocking point I'm gonna guess I'm slowly pushing this knocking point up um, and you know probably from bumping up against it to get my crawl done so I'm gonna retune now you know off camera make sure that my knocking points good I'm gonna take that measurement then I'm gonna see if I have some center serving that's the right size tie on the new center serving and then tie on some permanent knocking points and hopefully that'll eliminate me chasing my tail and keep chasing this crawl down uh, and get that over because it, it's it's a little frustrating because I feel like I'm making the adjustments that should be making the difference and it just isn't on the target and I'm chasing my tail so I think something's missing and I know better I should have the right knocking points on and I should have taken the time by now to tie on good center serving that I'm not slipping on and happy with. Uh, but you know that's part of the learning experience that's part of learning barebow and cutting my teeth on it and trying to really you know see what i like and what i feel that is uh, working for me you know i've noticed if i push pressure in with my thumb as i'm setting my crawl and i can you know not pay attention to it and it's not going to slip but as soon as i let go with my thumb i tend to lift with this hand first and then this hand follows once it gets up to a certain point and if i switch to just lifting with this hand i'm noticing that i have to add a lot of tension in my front hand um, that throws off my consistency of my grip sear happening and it just uh i gotta work on finding a shot cycle and a shot routine that really works for what i'm working with here in barebow but yeah that's pretty much what i am working with and a good starting point for me to establish 260 out of 300 on an unknown target face here uh, could have been a higher or a lower score than normal, I'm not entirely sure. But overall, I'm not disappointed with it. I did learn some things, so I can take a whole lot from it and make these adjustments, and then I'm gonna be better because of it. So that'll probably be one of the next few things I do here is, is doing this and adjusting these things. And I'm probably gonna actually do a live tonight, which will be uh, recorded before that you'll see this video. And I'll be doing the uh, knocking points in the center serving on the live stream tonight, talking Barabo with everybody. So uh, you'll be seeing this after that. And I'm excited to try some new serving and see if that fixes my problems. I do have a question for everybody that's familiar with Barabo. Are stackable weights, are these legal for Barabo or not? I'm not sure. It doesn't say specifically no stackable weights, but what I have seen is that the weight must be directly attached to the bow. I believe they say that because they want to not have any sort of damper between the weight and the riser, but technically this weight is not attached directly to the bow, it's attached to another weight. And I could see that potentially being legal because I've seen those bridges that mount here to here and then there's adjustable weights you can put on. So I don't see why that would be legal and these wouldn't be, so I'm not entirely sure. So if you've shot bare bow and you've used stackable weights and you know it's not an issue, let me know below. If you know that it's illegal, let me know below, please tell me because I don't know and I haven't seen a ruling out there specific to stackable weights on a bare bow and whether or not it's okay. So that's it for today and I'm excited to tie on new serving and new knocking points so I don't have to keep chasing my tail.
Hey, thanks for watching. If you like this video, consider hitting the subscription button and the notification bell, as well as the like button. I would appreciate it. Also, please consider supporting my channel if you head to my website, jakekaminski.com. There'll be info and links on Patreon, apparel, books, and equipment sales, PayPal donate button, a PO box to send things to, and above all else, please share this video because there's no better advertising than word of mouth.